when I think about what Jesus did how Jesus came into our world how Jesus' sacrifice is in coming into this world becoming a man and laying down his life to come from heaven on earth is not the same as to leave a hotel and live on a street to come from heaven on earth is not the same as to leave a comfortable bed in your house with the AC and living under the bridge where you see spiders and everything that is not an accurate comparison but most of us wouldn't even do that but Jesus for the sake of us leaves heaven where he spent eternity not few years eternity comes into a new world where there is more than rats there are sins there is corruption there is oxygen there is law of gravity there is sleeping walking there is all of these things and he completely immerses himself into this world but the amazing part is that he did not come into this world with a heavenly chariot heavenly bed heavenly throne heavenly robe and heavenly messengers he did not come into this world like most of us go into other missionary trips bring 25 bags of everything that we'll ever need for us and our neighbors and we come into a missionary trip and there's literally all of our makeup all of our clothes and we pre-order hot water from somewhere we find wi-fi we have everything that we had in the united states the only difference is the coordinates are different. Jesus comes into this world not as just fully God, he becomes a fully man, means he strips himself of all the makeup of heaven and takes fully the makeup of the earth. God who created the mouth had to learn how to speak. God who created the knees had to learn how to walk. God who initiated sleep and day had to learn how to sleep and get tired. God who created everything had to as a man learn it all as a baby. A Billy Graham who is a very famous evangelist that all of us know about when he was a young man he said God revealed to him what the gospel is about from a story that he had experienced once. As a young man he developed this in fascin fascination with ants with these little creatures that crawl in your house and sometimes outside of the house. He said, I was so fascinated by it that I would come all the time and watch how they worked together. I watched their ant hill. I watched how they were so organized. I watched how they seemed to kind of not hit into each other, but always kind of be so busy and everything. And once a month in Billy Graham's house, there was a man who would come with a pest control where he would come and spray certain things around the house and in the house to kill ants, spiders and all other little creatures. And here's Billy Graham sitting in front of his fascination, the ant hill, knowing that tomorrow a man is going to come and extinguish all of these ants out of his house and around his house. He's a young boy. He comes to his mom and he says, mom, how can I warn them to leave the property? She said, well, you can try. Did you try talking to them? He said, well, they're not responding. He said, I took the biggest, biggest ant into my hand and I told the biggest ant, every month, your kind gets removed from my property. That day is coming tomorrow. Can you gather the rest of the troops and tell them you have less than 24 hours before a poison that will look like food will hit your territory and all of you one by one will die. He said that fat little ant looked at me and did nothing. Continued the whole thing again. And his mother said there was only one way ants will listen to you. If you become an ant. Would you become an ant to tell them they will be excommunicated and removed tomorrow? Imagine leaving the world you are accustomed to imagine living the world you are so comfortable in and going into a world that is under your feet going into a world that is so insignificant going into a world that is so minor compared to your world just so you can tell them that they are in danger so that you can be like one of them 
to guide them out of the truth. The sacrifice that Jesus made, if you can put the slide back on, the sacrifice that Jesus made is not only in coming into this world but becoming an end. Jesus became us. Jesus became fully man just so he can guide other men out of the danger that was coming upon our life which was we were following Satan, we were following sin and you would think that's already hard but he didn't, he wasn't the biggest end that had all other ends worshiping him. When Jesus came on this earth he wasn't fully welcomed. His birth was already an assassination note was written so he gets killed as a baby. Throughout his life he had very few friends and very many enemies. He didn't live even up to 33 years before people mocked, ridiculed, questioned, blasphemed, spit, scorched, plucked his beard out and blindfolded him and beat him and said prophesy. Here is a God becomes a man to tell men you are headed in the wrong direction. Here's a God who abandons the makeup of heaven, who abandons the beauty and the glories of heaven and becomes literally worse in our comparison than an end. To tell the other ends, this is not the way to do it. And at the end, he sacrifices his life for the very ends he came to show salvation. That is sacrifice.